If you're in the electronics hobby for any length of time, you'll probably accumulate a lot of meters, both uh, portable meters like some of these, and even bench meters like some of these. And then you get to the point where you wonder, are they accurate? Can you depend on them, etc. And then you can get like some of these from a ham fest here. needs repair. So if you get it repaired, how do you know if it's accurate? And then you have to calibrate it. Even a very expensive, sophisticated meter like this high-end fluke meter here, <laughs> you want to make sure that it's ac operating accurately. So how do you do that? Well, you need something like this. A voltage standard and that's what this short video is going to be about this is the voltage standard that I put together it's based on the 8584 precision voltage reference um, made by analog devices it comes in a number of different flavors which include the 8584 J K L S and T they have different tolerances inaccuracies. This particular one is based on the AD584L. The the module, the actual reference module, was one I purchased. You can buy these things. They're all over the internet. And they're programmable in four different outputs. As you can see there's 2.55, 5, 7.5, and 10 volts. And the L model here has an accuracy on the 10 volt scale plus or minus 5 millivolts 7.5 volt reference is accurate to plus or minus 4 millivolts 5 volt reference is accurate to plus or minus 3 millivolts and the 2.5 volt reference is accurate to 2.5 millivolts which is much more accurate than anything I need I built it into this little box here it's powered by lithium ion cells and you turn it on here it's got a green light tell me it's on and what I wanted to do I wanted to run it on battery power because I wanted to uh, make sure I didn't have any inherent noise by running it off of the power line and I also wanted to know if the battery gets below the level that this thing would maintain its accuracy now they say you can have an input voltage of between 4.5 and 30 volts so I'm going to open this up and show what I actually used to power the module. And that'll be next. Here's the actual module that I purchased on the internet. They're available all over the place if you just search for precision voltage reference and just put in AD584. And the silver can here in the middle, this is the actual AD584. Uh, circuit in there and as this came they had a place here you could mount a battery a cell or you could power it from this uh, barrel connector what I decided to do I powered it from four surplus uh, salvaged lithium-ion cells out of laptop batteries so when this is fully charged you're looking at um, around 16 volts and of course it'll drop down um, as these become depleted and I wanted to make sure that if the voltage got below the specified input voltage for the reference I wanted to make sure I knew about it so what I did I built a circuit here on this little perf board that is a, a comparator and what it does it has a reference and this little two color LED here when the unit is within above 12 volts, this light will come on green, this LED. If it drops below 12, this turns red. And that lets me know that uh, the voltage of the batteries are depleting and I need to recharge it, which I can do on the side of the unit. I have a barrel connector and I can charge these lithium cells from an external source. When this switch is in the off position, 
this barrel connector is connected directly to the battery bank. When it's in the on position, this is disconnected and the batteries are connected to the voltage standard. And of course there's two banana jacks on the top here with, bi with binding posts on them that I can connect an external device. You select the range you want with this wafer switch here and you can pick either 10, 7.55 or 2.5 voltages there. So next I will show the circuit I used to monitor the cell voltage. Here's the circuit I'm using to monitor the battery voltage. This is the on off switch. This is the four lithium cells. So about 16 volts when they're charged. In the on position, the battery is connected directly to the voltage standard board and it's also connected down to this board here. When the voltage is above 12 volts, this zener is conducting, which turns on the transistor, which takes the collector low, which inhibits the red LED. At the same time, the voltage is above 8.2 this LED, the green LED, is on. So as the batteries discharge and this voltage starts to decay, once it gets at about 12 volts, plus or minus a little, eventually this, LED, this uh, Zener diode here will stop conducting. That turns off the transistor, which makes its collector go high, turning on the red LED. And with these values shown, the green is off, the red is on. And that lets me know that um, I have to recharge it. When I put this switch in the lower position, the battery is connected to the barrel connector on the side. I can directly charge it with a constant current supply and charge the cells up. I've disconnected the lithium batteries down here and I've connected an external power supply to power the standard and I've raised the voltage to 14.68 volts on a bench power supply and you can see the lights green here on the on the voltage standard so now I'm going to slowly bring the voltage down as you watch here it's going to drop there's 14 volts 13 and this light will go out shortly 12 there at 12.4 volts the light changed to red and that tells me this voltage is getting low enough where I need to charge it and then as I bring it back up above 12 approximately 12 the green light comes back on and that'll stay on all the way down like I say this unit will operate down to 4 volts but anything below 12, I'll get the red light, red LED. The nice thing about this unit is it's portable. You can take it with you and leave it on. It doesn't use very much current. And for instance, if you wanted to compare this to a standard if you were by a university or a lab where you could actually take this unit and you could compare it to a maybe a secondary standard at some university or or an industry that has you know e equipment that's calibrated annually you could do that too this standard uses very little current I measured at 13.39 volts in the 10 volt position it, it uh, used 0 0.97 milliamps and in the 2.5 volt position 1 milliamp so this will run a long time on one charge and like I say this is based on the analog devices AD584LH here I'm going to compare a couple DVMs with the um, with the voltage standard here. Let's see what uh, see what it says. One on the right on the 10 volt range says 9.99 .9 
That's a Kaiwitz HT-118A. Here's one on the left, a Must Tool MT-826. See what that one says. 9.97, 9.98. Well, we could even... Uh, we could even try testing this very high precision and accurate fluke meter here. <laughs> Oop, better turn. Uh oh. Technical problem here. Oh my gosh, we got. Um, let's see what we got. Well, this this highly accurate fluke meter must need a little calibration here. We got 10.1. And um, yeah even goes up to a thousand volts but something tells me I wouldn't use it in anything above maybe 12 <laughs> we've come a long way since these uh, were used maybe by uh, Tom and Nicholas or Nicola Tom Edison and Nikola Tesla probably had something similar the Weston standard cell I believe this is an unsaturated one um, this is no good anymore. The voltage is down. And this this is old data, 1970. I don't even know what this is. This is probably more valuable for the platinum. I believe it might have in it. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, um, this is what Granddad used to use to uh, calibrate his old analog meters way back in the day. So for a very small fee you can have a fairly accurate voltage standard for your home lab so you might want to build one of these units well that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it found it helpful thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye for now